Santa Claus don't come to our house anymore. Don't care if we're naughty or nice. All right, so we've got a mess. We got a mess. Uh, I need to straighten up just slightly, just a little bit real fast. I got stuff everywhere, but we are about to pull this front end off. So if you've seen in the other videos or if they haven't, I think they've come out so far. Uh, we had control arm issues. We had uh, all the issues with the front end crap. We're gonna put all that stuff on the back burner and we're gonna get these freaking down bars ran over Christmas. It is officially Friday afternoon. Before Christmas, I have off for like a week and I my plans are to get this done. I went to Southern Metals this afternoon. Somebody asked where I buy my tubing from. I buy my tubing local from Southern Metals Wholesale Recycling Warehouse. Um, it's a metal yard local to me. Uh, I can get the tubes. I don't know the name of it. It's when a tube is made, it's rolled, and then it's seam welded, okay? I can get them tubes for really cheap. 20 foot stick is $38 for an inch and five eighths. Um, so that's really good. We're gonna bend up these front tubes in our Harbor Freight bender over here, and it's gonna kink them, okay? Um, we may put a little bit of a brace in there if it needs it, if it looks like it's kinked too bad. But after talking to Uncle Mike more today, I'm not worried at all because if we nudge this thing off into a wall head first, we kind of want some stuff to collapse. Yeah, the harder it is rigid wise, the more you're gonna fill it inside the car. You don't want your cage to collapse. You don't want the cage to collapse. You don't want the cage to collapse. You don't want the cage to collapse. Let's make sure everybody understands that. But your front end on your car, you know, if it could absorb some of the blow, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You don't want it to hit the motor and destroy the motor and all that stuff. We could argue back and forth for a million hours, but we're not gonna argue back and forth. We're not gonna argue back and forth in the comments. Um, we're gonna use the, the welded together tube, basically for the front end. We're gonna do some sectioning and stuff like that. Uh, and we're going to build the front end more on a budget. We're going to do the dash bar in the car, but we're going to use DOM steel tubing for the dash bar. I think that stuff is about $200 for a 20-foot stick versus $38 for like a 20-foot stick uh, locally. So I've got some of the DOM tubing left over from where we did the rocker bars. If you remember a while back on this cage, so everything inside the cage is up to cert. And we're going to keep everything in the cage up to cert for safety purposes because we don't want to build an unsafe car because i have kids and i want to come home to them um, but the front end just like on modern cars a lot of modern cars in the collision industry as you know we do salvage title rebuilds for a living a lot of your cars are designed by an engineer not some idiot in the garage like myself they're designed to collapse and absorb some of that impact um, but the cars are supposed to stop at the driver's compartment. So at the firewall and at right behind the back seat, they're supposed to have stopped and absorbed all the impact before they get here to hurt the individuals. That's why they do so much testing on them. So a little bit of crumple up front and in the back is not gonna be a bad thing or the end of the world. I just wanna get that out of there. If you feel like still arguing in the comments, go ahead and hit pause on the video, drop your comment below, and we'll go back and forth for a few minutes, but I'm gonna get bored with it and move on. So in the meantime, we're gonna get started on this. We're gonna take the front end off the car and then we're gonna try to start figuring out how to go and where to go. We're gonna punch some holes in the firewall. We're gonna shoot some bars through. We're gonna try to hit these upper hats and then we're gonna bend us up a 45. We're gonna section them together and roll from there. So uh, let's get this mess cleaned up so I can work because I hate making a new mess on top of old mess on top of old mess. So let's get mess cleaned up and let's make a new mess let's get after it. all right after cleaning up your shop and making some room to work um first step is obviously going to be to get your car on a level surface if you're going to do any sort of thing with any level bars now i don't know if these bars are necessarily going to be level uh, i'll try to mimic them left to right to the same degrees but i kind of want the upper bar running level i think i thought about diving it uphill a little bit but then it makes the connection at the bar and there the cage a little harder. So I'm thinking about just pulling a level straight off of the cage and just shooting straight through so that that whole upper bar is level parallel to the ground. Um, so we're gonna continue working off our front frame rails right here. This is where we wanna work off of. Uh, this is where we've redone the whole everything off of. And I remember when I originally built this car and I built the front end, I built it off of the uh, front frame rails being level. I leveled the car out by, uh, by that. So. We're gonna call that zero. That is close enough to zero for me, for a Harbor Freight um, protractor, I guess. Let's see here, let's check this. This probably is not accurate. I mean, the, you can see that thing, let's see if we can catch it again, how it just jams up and stops. You see how it stopped so fast? Let me see if I can go get the other one. One of these don't work that great. 
Okay, so that one bounced around and settled down and didn't get hung up. So let's see where this front bar ends up at. I think it's gonna pretty much end up the same. Uh, hello? <laughs> hello? Hello? All right, so that's hello? pretty much the same as the front frame rails. Hello? The front frame rails. Hello? hello? What are you doing? <laughs> because the front frame rails, like hello? I said originally, that's how I built the car, and I know that. Uh, but if you don't know your car, you need to check that. So that's close hello? enough for me hello? to work. Uh, the upper bars off of. Like I said, Hello. these things ain't got to be that precise. Hello. You just have to remember in the future that you didn't build them that precise. So uh, let's find where these things are roughly going to pass through the firewall at and then uh, I guess go ahead and build us a pretty good size hole because I don't know exactly where it's going to fall um, and then we'll have to patch it later. Now I would love for the bar to pass up here. Okay through here and hit the cage because if we hello? level the level out hello that hits the top of the hat perfect like i love that hello harper hello? you're being really loud down there hello <laughs> you think that's a microphone where is it but however when you look through here my dash is right there you can see the lower dash which is going to be that bar Okay, that goes across. So when we look dead on, we need to be lower than these two holes right here so that we don't have to cut up our metal dash because I don't want to cut the metal dash at all. That's the metal dash, even though I have another one of these, but I just don't want to cut the metal dash. I can't take it out the car without taking the windshield out because the way on these Mavericks, the dash is melted in. There's some screws that go down like this through the top of the dash. So we're not pulling a freaking windshield and all that. We're just not doing it. Uh, so we're going to dive the bar through right here where the ac vent is going to go that way we could basically take the ac vents out and the bar will hopefully run through there and hopefully we won't have to cut much more if so we'll change to a maverick lower dash versus the comet um but we'll have to see that whenever it's time to uh, put it in we'll have to make some measurements because i don't remember exactly where it falls but we want to go below this but above this so we want it to fall right between here like i said when you look straight forward that pretty much hits above the wire pass-throughs, but below them two circles that we already had cut out for the radiator hose pass-throughs. So that's going to put us down here pretty low. Let's see here. That's going to put us like all the way down here, meaning then we're going to have to come off of that bar, that upper bar, and do some kind of loop upper loop to catch the hat so it would definitely look cleaner up there but um i kind of don't want to do that because then that just makes my job way more complicated i don't think i might change my mind all right so how do i go about laying out my bars again let's pause one second i did not bend my cage my cage is an s and w's race car pre-bent cage that has already been inserted passed perfectly fine we've got to make sure that everybody understands that because there's a lot of people probably about to be mad at me for the way I do things because they're not that great. I'm just not gonna sit here and lie and not put it on YouTube because I very well could lie and not put this stuff on YouTube. So let me flip the camera around and show you how I hack this up. All right, so my fenders go flat from here. They touch there and they touch there. So I put a straight edge back on there uh, to simulate, keep everything kind of pulled straight. Now, this is not the bar I'm using. This is just going to be my mock-up bar. It's lightweight. It's thinner wall. And it's not exact size, but it basically will help me find angles and figure out where I want to, uh, to be at. So I have cut this open right here to figure out where it was going to hit. I probably didn't need to go that low exactly, um, but I'm also going to put probably the radiator pass-through stuff there. And I'm just going to build a patch panel to go back in there. Not going to weld it. going to build an aluminum one that is riveted back in um, that we will put in that way so we're good to go um yes we probably could have done this before we did the interior and then we could have welded that back in technically we still can weld it back in uh, but i just wanted to get some of this stuff cleaned up i hate having a car to work so far apart so if anybody's asking why i'm working backwards and now going back into the inside of the car welding it's just because i'm used to doing progress cleaning up doing progress cleaning up that way you don't get such a train wreck and everything's lost all right so let's get that behind me uh, next off, I would have loved to have this bar straight through, but again, I don't want to cut the metal dash. So 
we want this thing to hit the cage right here uh, through where this plastic is lower because we can cut this up or we can get a Maverick lower plastic. So that's how that's going to go. That's going to go underneath the metal dash and it's going to hit right there. Um, I have followed the line, the angle, the setback of my shock tower hat. So when you measure this, uh, this is going to be one inch from the top of the bar to the shock tower. So one inch, one inch. Okay. Um, when we get this done, I don't know if this bar is going to go in. I think it will. So therefore I will start slowly coping out the shock tower hats and pushing this in whenever we get the actual bar cut. And then we'll build us a little, uh, gap here possibly, uh, or probably will, um, some steel plate, uh, to really tie that top in and make it strong. I grabbed some stuff from Southern Metals, uh, the recycling place today for that. Uh, so that's the angle. The angle is determined off of the shock hat. Now, if you are really good and talented, which I am not talented at all when it comes to this, then what you're going to do is you're going to bend or the bar is going to go to angle. You're going to cut or cut that piece at the correct angle down there. And then you're going to figure in your 45. Your 45 also has to go that way. So it's not going to just come straight off, dip straight down and hit the bar. It has to come off 45 down and roll and go in like that. And then that angle has to be coped uh, correctly. So I can't do that. I'm not uh, that talented. So what I do, the same thing I did on the front end, uh, this is again the reason why I bought a pre-bent cage because I can't do that kind of work, um, is we are gonna cut this bar, this straight, okay? We're gonna leave it long to about right here. And uh, we're gonna get that where that fits right. And then what we'll do is we'll bend this up a 45. Uh, we will then find out where our cut our 45 back to where it starts to 45 out somewhere in here. And we will cut this and cut the 45 and then we'll sleeve it and then we'll butt weld it. I get, before in the past, I didn't even butt or I butt welded up front and didn't sleeve it. I think I'm going to go ahead and sleeve this one. I'm going to go ahead and sleeve it just for the heck of it. I'm going to have to run to Southern Metals tomorrow and get a, a piece of diameter that will go inside that tube. Um, so we can sleeve it and do some ro uh, rosette buds or rose buds, whatever you call it. Um, well, so we're going to sleeve it somewhere in here, and then we'll also be plating it across the top. So we're going to put our joint pretty much in the center of the shock tower hat, and then we'll sleeve it and we'll plate it across it so that it's, it's going to be perfectly fine. Um, but what that's going to allow me to do is put my 45 on and then roll my 45. Now that's where it gets a lot more tricky because then I have to get the angle cut uh, for that piece down there um, and for everything to hit to hit right. And it looks like a 45 is probably not even going to work. It's probably going to have to be a pretty harsh uh, 45, meaning we're probably going to have some kinking in it. But we'll see what happens whenever we get here. We just want to get this piece um, in and fitted, and then we will figure out our our down bar situation um, from there. But there's going to be some joints. I'm going to do basically mine in different sections and um, go from there. Back in the day, I would have literally just put a 45 on and then cut it again, and then I would have figured out my angle and my piece on that and then cut my length and then done that. So I would have had a butt weld about halfway here and a butt weld about halfway here to get all three of them pieces together. But this time we're going to try to at least hit it with two pieces and then uh, sleeve it together where it, uh, where it joints up. So uh, let me get this piece cut uh, to find the angle. I've just used one of these simply um because like i said i can't i can't do this like i just it's not i can't do it i haven't learned how to do this and i don't have time to learn how to do it right now um so i come in here find my angle like that on this thing so it's shy 90 it's not a 90 and then we're going to measure this angle out with another angle finder to get the angle and then we will roughly set our angle on our tube notcher here and then we'll use a tube notcher on this one i have not pulled this thing out and about two years, no, two and a half years, I think, almost three years, two and a half, three years, uh, because I've just been fish mouthing, fifth fish mouthing everything with the grinder and then welding up the gaps. So I'm not even gonna lie, when we hit that 45 down there, if it's really close, uh, we're gonna send it and weld the gaps up because uh, I just, I don't care, to be frank, I don't care about uh, welding up a little bit of a gap. So let's find this angle, throw this in, cut this tube, and see how it fits up. All right, well, we got interrupted for dinner time, but uh, now we're going to stick the bar in and try to get this cut done. Um, so I left this end uh, 
out and I fit it up and it was fitting good. I got a really good fit. And then I went to uh, pull it out or whatever and cut a little bit off because it was like way up here and I cut the wrong end off. <laughs> so just my luck, I literally cut my fish mouth off. Here it is laying on the ground. So I cut my fish mouth off and I had to completely redo it again. Thankfully, this is why you make your bar long. So this is why you go longer with your bar if you're an idiot like me and you don't know what you're doing. Um, so I remade it. Um, I'm happy with the fit. You're not going to be happy with the fit, though, if you're a perfectionist. Uh, it's got some gaps. So when we center it like that, okay, you can see it's got some slight gaps right there. Let's see if I can show the other side. Okay. So it's definitely uh, got some gaps. But I can weld that stuff up. It's not it's not that bad. And I really don't care. Um, I'm not going to sit here and continue to fit that perfect. And then you just bury your fitment underneath your weld. Now I understand a perfect fitment makes for a better weld, makes for easier work, makes for a cleaner weld. I get it. That's cool. Um, that's the correct way to do it. But I just don't, uh, that stuff just don't matter to me. I'm going to weld that gap up. So I'm going to weld that gap up put paint over it and uh, it's gonna rock and roll. Um, what I'm doing right now is I've touched the bar to it and then you literally just take you a Sharpie and lay it on the pipe and just trace it around like this, draw on it, and then you'll get you this radius. It's kind of hard to show because I've got all of this stuff in the way, but you'll get you this radius where you can start radiusing in your tube. Um, to the hat. Now, again, just as normal with me, I absolutely have no plan. I absolutely have no measurements that I'm seeking. I absolutely have no idea how far I'm going in. Um, I have no rhyme or reason at all on my first side. I just do it until I like the way it looks, until I'm happy with it. And then it's the second side that gets complicated because then I have to duplicate whatever in the world I did or come up with on the first side. I got to duplicate it to the second side. Um, so I think that's, I think that's about where I want to be. I don't want to be too far in because of room, but I wanted it coped around that a little. Um, okay, so I can get some weld around that and I can get some weld around that. Uh, that way I can weld that hat uh, to this tubing. And then I barely got a little bit of a nub right here where hopefully I can barely cut this off and uh, put a sleeve in there and it kicked my 45. On your Harbor Freight bender, this is a inch and a quarter die. And you can see, let's see here. You can see how it doesn't fit tight. You can see that light on both sides. Okay, that's where your issue runs in with is how it doesn't sit, fit tight because that's an inch and a, this is for inch and a quarter pipe, not not uh, inch and a quarter tube. Whereas this is inch and five eighths tube. This is for inch and a quarter pipe. Um, so they don't work perfect, but as you can see, it's really close. Now I'm thinking about what I'm going to try is lay a piece of 22 gauge, uh, sheet metal in here on this one. I have not done this yet. I don't know what it's going to do, but we're going to try it. Uh, I've seen other people do something like it, basically lay a small piece of metal in the center, and then we're going to press this pipe with this in there. And I'm hoping that it squishes and forms this sheet metal to that and takes up the slack. Uh, we're going to at least try it. I've never tried it before. Uh, you can do other things like what you, I talked about in one of my previous videos. I just want to keep touching on it in case somebody's new to the channel, such as filling this thing full of sand uh, and then putting freeze plugs or boat plugs or anything in the end of it. If you fill it full of sand, it's less likely to kink because it will keep the, um, the shape of the tube and it will just stretch the tube and bend it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't care about the kinks enough to fill it full of sand. Um, and to do all that and have sand everywhere and have to fill every one of them full of sand and then fit it, empty the sand out. I just, I literally don't care about the kinks. Like, I don't know no other way to put that um, with, the, a lot of people are going to hate me for it. I don't know how to say this stuff. But you move up your your rollers on this thing according to what die you're using. So since we're using an inch and quarter die, we need to go up four, whereas I was all the way down the other day uh, bending that little tube. So we're going to move these rollers up to number four. That helps so that it doesn't kink. Uh, now I have uh, um, done this without following the rules and I have literally done a larger tube uh, with the rollers in the wrong position, whether they're too far up or too far down. And it just makes it kink worse a lot of times or not work 
correctly. So if it's too far up, then you're not gonna be able to get the bend really. Um, and if it's too far down, it's gonna kink it really aggressive where it will actually kink the tube against the end of the die a lot more than if the roller was up higher. So I've used this thing in multiple wrong ways to use stuff, um, which is very common for me in my style. So let me get this put in and let me just literally start bending something up. I know it's not gonna be a 45 because a 45 should shoot me way out there. So I need to be between a 45 and a 90. Um, I just have no clue where I want to be at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to chunk it in there and bend something past a 45, like maybe like a 50 or 60, and then just, just see where it hits at. You kind of just freestyle a build and you can see it in your head and you know how things, how you want things to be, but you don't really care where they fall at. Uh, you're just going for a certain kind of look. Um, it allows you to not stress so much. When you have to be very precise and nail things perfectly, then the stress level is high. If you are catching on, if you follow me for a while, if you know that's how I also work, that's how I work for a living. Um, that's the reason why I do salvage titles because I don't have to stress about the paint. Uh, we do rebuilds because there's no customer to answer to. Like I'm just selling a car at the end of the day. If it's got flaws in the paint, they're just buying a car. They're not buying a paint job. Uh, so my whole lifestyle and the way I live is I don't search for perfection. Um, I want things to look really good. So I really will focus in on the way things look. Um, but as far as like the, I guess the quality or the perfection to get there, I, I always just don't, I don't, that's not where I spend a lot of time. I don't know how to word this and sound good, I guess. So let's bend this thing right, up. So what we've done is put the piece of metal in there, like literally just sat it in there. Okay. So I just shaped it like a hot dog bun and just put it down in there. It's not pushed in there or anything. You can see it's just sitting there. So we're gonna just start pushing on this um, and it should just form itself. Like it should stretch as this thing goes up. It should push it down in there and hopefully keep this tube a lot tighter in there this time and eliminate some of the kinks. Like I said, if the kinks there, I don't care. But if there's something that we can easily do to help with the kink, then why not do it? No, I'm gonna have to put my phone down because this thing is gonna take a little bit of force to want to bend. So I'm gonna have to hold this in my left hand and pump with my right hand. Um, but how I found my position, if anybody's curious, is uh, you could tell that I pretty much just hit it in the center. So I bought 21 feet of this and he whacked it down to 10 and a half. So I have 10 and a half of material for each side. So basically one hit for each side. Um, and that's all I need. We're running DOM tubing on the inside. Like I said, that's just should be a straight piece uh, with no bend in it for the dash bar. So I just held the tube up like this, let it go like a foot, 10 inches to a foot past that bar. And then I just made a mark roughly right here. And then I'll just put my bend in there and then I'll just push it up or down you know, wherever my bend needs to fall at, basically, if I can get it to work. And then when we finally get it close enough, we'll mark uh, our point there, we'll mark our point here, and then we'll start fine tuning it and working our cuts and working our shapes into where they fit a lot closer. So let's get this thing uh, bent up and hopefully it's not too hard to bend. Uh, let's give it a go. Bender, you have to remember that any angle that you're bending, you're only actually bending half the angle. You're not bending the whole entire angle. Um, so if you're doing a 90, you're going to be bending 245. So you gotta find my angle finder, uh, but you're going to be bending, it's going to read 45 and then 45 times two is going to be the 90. So what I'm doing now, if I'm looking for roughly just a 50, that's just a pure guess, um, because I know I want it to be somewhere between a 45 and 90 and I want to creep up on it. Then I'm looking for a 25 degree, uh, on one leg. So only. we're going to take this guy again. I'm going to put it here again, and we're going to zero it out. Zero it out. Does not matter, again, just like the car, what the concrete says or nothing, because this plane right here is zero, okay? So that zeroes that out. So then we're going to put it on here. So we're at 10 point something, so that's like a 20 degree angle right now. So I'm going to keep on bending this until this reads roughly 25, give or take. Like I said, I don't care. I'm not looking for perfection. And then I'll put it on the car and see if the 50 works. If the 50 don't work, Depending on how far off it is, I'll probably go either 60 or 75 or something. Right, 25.8, 25 times two, 
it's going to be your 50. Go back to that. That's a 0.32. Again, this measuring device that I use jumps all over the place. That side says 0 0.02. I think this thing, oh, look at that. We got a zero. <laughs> Um, that's where you take a picture or if you get YouTube, if you're trying to do YouTube magic and look all perfect, then you don't turn the camera on until you show that. And then you tell, you know, everybody that you're at a zero. You don't show them all the bull crap like I show. Um, then you put it on here and we should be close to a 25. There we go. I don't care about the decimals in this situation. So that's a 50. So now we're going to take this thing out. Uh, you can see how it has deformed the metal and rolled the metal and all that. Um, you can still see across the top. Look how that looks flat. See? So what it is is it's bulged these sides out right here really bad because this actually sticks up past uh, this die. So this die is really not deep enough uh, for this pipe because it's allowing the sides to kind of squish out. And when you're bending it, it's wanting to just collapse the face of it. So even with the shim, it's still wanting to collapse, just flatten the face. This is where if you had sand inside the tube and it was packed in there, um, it wouldn't collapse the top. It would keep this pushed up and it would keep more of a um, of a nicer bend. Now you will have spring back, just such as on the frame machines, the spring back is what you need to lead, read. Under pressure, it's, gonna, it's going to uh, read something that's not. So this is probably gonna spring back into the 24s. Once you learn what your spring back is on the material you're working with, Okay, so we dropped almost over a degree out of that. So really we should have bent that to a 26 so that spring back would be 25. However, we're not, we don't care about perfection again. So we are just gonna leave that, fit that to the car and just see what that's, uh, what it looks like. Often when you pull the tube out in this situation, the die will be stuck on it and you'll have to hit the die with a hammer to knock it off the tube uh, because of just how the tube has stretched in the die. All right, so I roughly held it up there. Not terrible, however, this leg is too long and it's going way over here, hitting the door and stuff like that. So I need to get it in a little tighter to actually be able to see anything. So we're going to cut some of this leg off right here. Um, you can see the bottom of it, it wrinkled it pretty good right there on the bottom because this material is uh, so thick. And the top, you'll always be able to fill a dimple. So the dimple's right there. That's where your roller is, or that's where your roller was um, sitting at. So you're going to need to definitely cut past your roller. If you mess up and cut in front of your roller and you cut this leg too short, then when you put it back in to bend it more, if you decide to bend it more, then it's not gonna have nothing to hit the roller and you're not gonna be able to bend it again. So I always cut mine past the roller, maybe six inches or so. That way I can reload this back in there and keep on bending. So let's whack this off. So our piece of metal, there you can see it is. I'm not sure if maybe the wrinkles in my tube is because of this metal, maybe because it didn't have nowhere to um, stretch and go. It actually uh, bunched up in that curve and that's what caused the tube to wrinkle. Cause I've never actually had a tube wrinkle. I've had them all flatten and kink but i've never had a wrinkle in a tube like that but normally I also don't bend stuff this thick um so i'm actually going to leave this out on this one and go back to just bending it how i have in the past i don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference and also this time being i can see my die one thing i did when i first bolt this bender is i took a grinder or a file and i actually pretty much marked it right there in the center so you can see where i've cut the um the die so what i'm going to do is which i need to get a better sharpie uh i'm gonna make a mark right there all right new sharpie i'm gonna make a mark right here that way if i have to put this thing back in i have a reference to find center of that die so i'm bending it back at the exact same point left to right as i was when i originally what i mean by slowly work up to it you know bend up and keep checking is that's what i mean for you to do me i'm like i said i'm impatient and i have no rhyme or reason so we're gonna jump from a 25 on the leg to this time a 36 on the leg. So it should put me about a 70 because remember, we just seen that when I let the pressure off this, we fall back a little over a degree. So let's see what happens now. Then we don't have that metal shim in there. I don't know if that's gonna affect anything, but let's loosen this and see what our fallback is. I'm predicting that it's gonna fall back to 35. So there's 35. And now the more I let off of it, the pieces coming down because of the weight of the pipe. So that's why your degrees are gonna keep changing because it's heavy on this side. So you gotta see that angle as soon as it lets the pressure go, uh, but before it falls off the rollers. Because once it falls off the rollers, such as that right there, you can change the angle all over the place. Um, see, it's 
see how it's off the rollers. You can change the angle all over the place. So it's just when it really is that pressure off. And you'll see the machine actually flex and relax. The machine, the piece of crap. <laughs> I Actually, I really like this thing. But you'll see it uh, flex and relax kind of. So let's now try this again and see um, if that kind of hits where I want to hold this for a second because there is a lot of weight right here balancing on my little <laughs> little set of pliers but as you can roughly see that's pretty much where i want it so i'm gonna put the phone down and now i'm gonna start probably figuring out you can see it slipping i'm gonna figure out where i want to make my cuts to and start cutting this thing back and fitting it up all right so this is where we're going to start getting a little bit more serious about the quality of this hack job and we're going to try to take it from a complete hack job to a uh high class hack job so what we're going to do is we don't have a chop saw i don't have a chop saw here i actually have one at the shop it's extremely loud and I didn't bring it, which it wouldn't really help too much in this situation of us cutting so close in the bend. Well, I mean, I guess it might, it might've held that side uh, decently square, but what we're gonna use is we're gonna use this hose clamp. I marked my piece where I want to make my cut. Now you'll be able to fill on the back side of your tube on the inside where that bend stops. You'll be able to fill a little indention of where the bend stops and then the tube goes back straight. You'll be able to fill it. I can't show it on camera, but you can feel it. So what we're gonna do, actually I need to, I think I'm on this side. So I need to move that a little bit away so we can sleeve it. Let's move this back just a little bit more. We're gonna slide this down and get a little bit out of this uh, bend, but the hose clamp is gonna keep us where we can draw a straight line all the way around it, and then we can just cut it with a normal angle grinder. So we tighten our hose clamp around, and then we're just gonna go around and trace it on the hose clamp and then we'll cut it on that so we don't end up with the cut a crooked cut all right so now what we're going to do i have put my blocks down there and that will just hold it roughly and now all we're looking for is to kind of kick this out where this thing goes straight now we'll figure that out perfect here in a minute but we kind of want these on the same plane. Doesn't matter if it's perfect, perfect. Because our weld is going to be hit underneath there and it'll be grinded and it'll be plated across the top and all that fun jazz. Actually, we need to move our tape. So I'm going to have to move my tape, but then we'll hold it up there and we'll mark it. So let's move the tape real fast. This is another good thing about not tacking anything in, since I don't do stuff precise, is that I'll still be able to move everything around to get the gaps where they fit halfway decent. Let's see this side. And we're just gonna mark it right there. And that's roughly where we want these two to go together. And then we're gonna take our hose clamp, put it around it. Again, the hose clamp is just to help you get the straight cut. Or on the, uh, on the chassis. But now I can work all the way around this and cut this thing the best as possible. All right, uh, so I left that hanging long on the inside. Uh, basically where it was on the inside like that and just eyeballed it and put a mark on it I actually put the mark on it right there and then I cut it long very rough very rough um, So we're gonna probably definitely have some gaps, but you can see that utmost point right there That's what we're gonna start coping first So we'll cope some out of that and then we'll start slowly coping the back side We're gonna go ahead and put lines on them where they're touch uh, where they touch at and Then that's gonna straighten out the top because as we cope that this bar can drop in a little and hopefully it will fit up uh, decent. You can see I'm way away from that piece right there. So this thing can move around and I still have a gap on the backside because it can kind of drop and roll inwards like that is, is the goal. Remember, if I, if I mess this up, I promise you I'm not bending all this over. I promise you I will be welding the gap shut. So we're gonna try to get it right. We're gonna put forth a little bit of effort um, and I'm hoping we do get it right because if so, that's going to be our first side and I'm really 
digging the way that looks, how it's sloped back with the shock towers and everything, I think it's gonna look pretty freaking cool. Um, and then all we'll have to do is we'll have to duplicate the other side. And I probably won't tack this one up. I'll probably literally take this one um, and put it over there and see if it fits up. And if it does fit up, then I can try to mimic this the best I can, which is hard. There's there's tons of tricks out there. You can take the end of the tubes, and I've seen people wrap sketty noodles around them with uh, a woman's hair tie or a rubber band, and then you just bump the noodles up to the end of the tube to make uh, to copy the coping, and then you can wrap tape around the noodles, and then you can slip that off, put it on the other tube, draw all around the edge of the noodles, and then you duplicate your uh, coping to the other side. They also make tools to basically do that same thing. The sketty noodles is just a cheap way to do it if you get fat, thick sketty noodles. Um, there's there's all kinds of tools to find degrees and find that stuff. There's all kinds of channels out there to showcase that stuff. But this is what we are using right here on this channel. And I'm not going to spend a dollar more on anything to make my life easier or to make the work better. Like this is good enough for me. I'm happy with it. That's all that matters. So let's get after it. All right, so I'm very, very happy with that. I have a very low standard. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. <laughs> but sometimes there's an old saying where it's best to leave well enough alone. Um, so this is good up here. I can roll that right back into my cut, which means my bar is right back on the same angle as it was. Now this is a loose sleeve in here just to hold things up tonight. I think I'm gonna run over there possibly in the morning back to Southern Metals and get a little bit tighter of a sleeve. Maybe I might just bevel the piss out of this and then by the time I rosebud it and brace across the top, we honestly probably would be perfectly fine. Um, but that will roll right back into there. And then this down here, we do have gaps to weld up. So we have that big gap to weld up and we have that big gap to weld up. Now it literally looks like all we need to do is take a little bit more out of the front to get this bar to dive down. However, the more I take out, um, the more it's gonna dive down and lose its straightness here. And then also I could accidentally take out too much to the left or the right and then start rolling the bar off of the hoop bar, making it not center. Whereas now, when we look at the front of the chassis, that thing looks really good. Like it's gonna look good with welds on it. 